In basketball or sports in general, there are pecking orders. You know who the leaders are, you know who the support pieces are, especially at the professional level. But occasionally, that support player or up and comer is tired of being a background piece and wants more opportunity to prove that they should be a part of that main group they want in. And sometimes that up and comer becomes so good that there's no choice but to put them in there with the main group. But for the Reggie Jackson era with the Oklahoma City Thunder, there was only temporary moments of him being a part of OKC's main group. Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant never saw eye to eye with Reggie and it eventually led to him getting traded. Let's talk about how Reggie Jackson's ambitions on the Thunder created a complicated situation where he and the Thunder's two best players were publicly beefing with each other. It's April 27, 2014. The seventh seed Memphis Grizzlies are up 2-1 on the second seed Oklahoma City Thunder. The Grizzlies won their second straight overtime game over the Thunder and were making life very difficult for Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook to get to their spots offensively in Game 4. Oklahoma City was a minute away from going down 3-1 and possibly losing to the Grizzlies in the second straight playoffs. There were big questions about the future of the organization. You gotta remember, OKC lost Russ to an injury in the previous playoffs and lost in the second round, and now the next year, they're down 2-1 to one to the 7th seed. The Scott Brooks era might have come to an end, which might not have been a bad thing, but people were also seriously criticizing the Russ and Durant duo. How many times did you read that they should trade Russ back then? But all of that was shut down by third year guard Reggie Jackson, who became one of their more reliable guys off the bench in 2014. In the first three games of the series, Reggie Jackson was not good. He only scored 15 points in the three games and shot 3 of 21 from the field. Wasn't making much of an impact, but that all changed in game 4. Reggie came off the bench and outscored Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook by himself. Jackson scored 32 points in what was the series' third straight overtime game. He scored 5 points in a row in the last minute of the fourth quarter and made all 6 of his free throws in overtime. He shot 11 of 16 from the field while KD and Russ really struggled to do anything against Tony Allen, Mike Conley, and Marcus Gasol. KD and Russ shot a combined 1 of 12 from the 3 point line and turned the ball over 12 times. If they didn't get this type of game from Reggie, it would have been over. At points in the game, KD and Russ were letting Reggie Jackson run the offense. Their two stars were playing the role of like a Shane Battier or Trevor Ariza. They were spreading the court for Reggie so he could get to the basket. There was a lot of pressure in game 4 and I don't think anyone would have protested on the Thunder's bench if KD and Russ said, hey man, I'm taking 30 shots tonight, but they let Reggie take over and they got the win and eventually won in 7 games. That 32 point playoff game and regular season without Russell Westbrook led to Reggie Jackson wanting more opportunity. Fast forwarding to the fall of 2014, this is when the relationship between Reggie Jackson and KD and Russ really started to fall apart as well as with the organization. At the end of that season, Jackson was going to be a restricted free agent in the summer and up for a new contract. Two days before their season opener against Portland, Jackson sprained his ankle and missed the first two games. In their third game against Denver, Reggie was cleared to play, but according to a source, refused to because of disappointment that he wasn't traded before the October 31st extension deadline. This is where it got pretty bad. The next day at his media interviews during practice, he said that he probably wasn't going to play the next game because of that injury, but right after the interview, he did a windmill dunk in front of reporters and his teammates. And at the time, OKC was without Durant and Westbrook and only had 8 active players available. Not only was Reggie having a problem with KD and Russ, he was also having a problem with Steven Adams. Steven Adams released a book in 2018. He said that what made the Thunder work was that everyone from the front office to the 15th man knew their role except for Reggie. Adams said that Reggie was the only one on the team to complain about playing time. I mean there's a whole Twitter thread with quotes in it from the book. It's kind of unbelievable because you don't really hear Adams talking about internal team dynamics like this so it's pretty interesting coming from him. One of the quotes from Adams I'm going to focus on is this last one. When the trade deadline got near, we knew Reggie wanted to leave and because we knew he wanted to leave, we wanted him to leave as well. Why would we want to work every day with someone who wanted to be somewhere else? When he was finally traded to the Detroit Pistons, we forgot about him pretty quickly because we had new guys to welcome to the team. To be fair, I'm not going to disparage someone for thinking they can grow into a star player with more touches. These guys are literally in the top percentile of pro basketball players on earth. So if Reggie wants more shots and wants a bigger contract, that's cool. But I think there's something to buying in into a role as a support piece on a contender. So why did Reggie demand a trade? Pretty simple, it made no sense for the Thunder to start him next to Russ like he wanted to, and he did not want to come off the bench anymore. 
OKC needed a big man and Sam Presti wasn't paying long-term money for a backup guard that they can find elsewhere. Reggie wanted to start because the spot at shooting guard was open, Thabo Cephalosha was out with an injury, and Reggie made it public he wanted that spot and wanted to be a starter. And that kind of made it tough on the team because he went public with it. Surprise, surprise, he didn't become a starter and Reggie was losing minutes to Dion Waiters that last season because he wasn't playing defense, wasn't competing hard, or fitting in with Russ and KD. The exit was pretty ugly when Jackson was finally traded. Reggie tweeted out, crying tears of joy, hashtag God is great. But Kevin Durant tweeted that same day, once a thunder, always a thunder, at Kendrick Perkins, love you boy always. If that doesn't say a lot right there, and to make it even more clear that KD wasn't messing with Reggie, the next day after beating the Mavericks, KD said in a post-game interview, we felt like everybody wanted to be here except for one guy, and we now know who that one guy is. You think with some time passing by that no one would really care about Reggie leaving, but no, Russ and KD got into it with Reggie multiple times after he left the team. In November 2015, Reggie Jackson played his first game against the Thunder as a Piston, and here's what Russ had to say about his return. Anticipation about Reggie's return to OKC, uh, how do you think y'all handled him tonight? Who? Reggie Jackson. Oh, uh, what happened? There was a lot of anticipation about his return to Oklahoma City. How do you think y'all handled him? From media, uh, various people. Nobody in this locker room, we wasn't worried. We just came out and competed, maybe from y'all, but just another player, another team. Six months later, the Pistons beat the Thunder, and Reggie Jackson celebrated the win by waving his hands in the air. KD did not really appreciate that and had something to say the next day. It was Bush League, in my opinion. I mean, jumping up and down, running around, and, and I understand you're happy you won the game, but you know, that whole, our whole team didn't play. We beat the hell out of them if we did. You know, I know I don't talk like that, but you know, it pissed me off, but you know. What can I do about it? Some guys you know, are who they are. They won the game. Congrats. The funny thing about that KD interview is we now know him for speaking his mind on Twitter and not really holding back in interviews. But in those OKC seasons, KD gave mostly boring answers to everything. Westbrook didn't really like what Reggie did that day either. Russ said he'd see Reggie down the line and make sure he's in hell the next time they play. I don't, I don't appreciate it for our team, our organization. I don't like it at all. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, we'll see him down line. Um, you know, we, we take care of that when we, when we get there. And it didn't stop there. The next year in 2017, when the Thunder were going to play the Pistons, a reporter asked Russ if he's up for this game like he said he would be last year. This was the game he was talking about in that last clip. Russ is honestly hilarious for this interview because you know he remembers what he said, but he's so sick of hearing Reggie's name at this point. You guys last year, Reggie Jackson, because he was hurt. Do you remember the situation the last time you guys played against Reggie? Uh, no, I don't. With, uh, with him celebrating and you guys kind of had a reaction to it in the locker room. And there was a lot of talk about the next time you saw him, this is that next time. I don't know what you're talking about, man. So how was Reggie Jackson's Detroit Pistons experience? Mostly depressing. The Pistons didn't do much of anything with him in an increased role. It was obvious early on that being the leader and orchestrator of a team offense was not the role for him. He wasn't a good enough slasher, he wasn't a good enough three point shooter off the catch or off the dribble. To be fair, he did deal with injuries that kept him out of the lineup, but him being injured did not have much to do with him not being a quality NBA point guard. This is one of those situations when a player gets more opportunity, but it's actually worse. But OKC wasn't going to pay him what he wanted, so who am I to complain about him wanting a bigger role? Once it was obvious that the Reggie Jackson era in Detroit was done, they waived him and he was picked up by the Clippers last year. Funny enough, this season with the Clippers is exactly the role OKC wanted him to play with Russ and KD before he was asking for more minutes. This has probably been Reggie's best year as a contributor towards winning since that OKC season. Just recently, he outscored Portland's bench on his own with 23 points. I think he's shooting above 40% from three. He's playing well as an on and off guard. I actually trust him in these bench units for the Clippers. And that's it for me. I thought this would be a fun video idea. I see some of the beef history videos on here and I thought why not talk about one I haven't seen on YouTube before. NBA players have asked out before and will continue to demand trades, but Reggie Jackson's way of going about things in OKC probably went too far. Let me know how you're feeling about this video with KD, Russ, and Reggie Jackson in OKC. And if you're still here and enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like as it does help the channel do better and consider subscribing if you want to see more from me.